Good afternoon and welcome to the Department of State. Uh, just a little bit on the week ahead, um, the Secretary will be back uh, you know, late tomorrow night. Um, and then uh, in terms of our briefings here next week, I anticipate that we will brief Monday, Tuesday, and perhaps early on Wednesday, but we will not brief on Thanksgiving Day nor the day after. You know, Thanksgiving Day as everyone enjoys turkey or other uh, holiday uh, fixings. Um, and only to begin uh, by reinforcing the Secretary's Day uh, in Portugal. Uh, as you saw this morning, she had a bilateral with Portuguese uh, Foreign Minister Amado, uh, chaired the U.S.-EU Energy Council, uh, reviewing opportunities for uh, the United States and Europe to uh, closely coordinate policies, uh, create economic opportunities around the energy sector, and ensure energy security and diverse sources of energy uh, in the future. She had a, uh, a meeting with uh, uh, President Karzai in anticipation of uh, uh, the significant focus on Afghanistan uh, that uh, will come through the, uh, the NATO summit. Uh, then she has joined the President for his meetings with Portuguese leaders, uh, attending the North Atlantic Council meeting. Uh, and I think shortly uh, the President will have a bilateral with uh, Georgian President uh, Saakashvili, and then tonight before she completes her day in uh, Lisbon, uh, she'll have a working dinner with uh, NATO foreign ministers. That's it? That's it. Wow. It, it, All it's, right. it's a sunny Friday in Washington, <clears throat> D.C. Well, I hesitate to answer, ask this question because the answers that I've been getting to it in the last <laughs> two years have been incredibly unsatisfying, but I guess I have to anyway. Uh, what's the latest in the, uh, what are the latest developments in your attempt to get the Israelis to, um, reimpose a settlement freeze and get the um, peace talks started? Um, I, I believe uh, uh, we, we, re we remain in contact uh, with the Israelis, with the Palestinians. Uh, you know, David Hale is in the region and has had uh, contact today and will tomorrow with uh, uh, counterparts uh, uh, in Jordan uh, and Egypt. Uh, but beyond that, I've got no other activity to, uh, to point to today. Has he been able to tell, tell the Palestinians anything about where the process stands with the Israelis? Uh, we are keeping the Palestinians uh, informed of uh, our discussions with the Israelis. Right, but has he had uh, actually anything to, say, to tell them? Uh, our conversations with the Israelis continue and our conversations with the Palestinians continue. We are quoting an Israeli official uh, <coughs> in a story from Jerusalem as saying that uh, the administration is reluctant to put into writing some of the uh, commitments that Secretary Clinton uh, orally gave to <coughs> um, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu in New York. Is that true? Well, uh, we continue our discussions with the Israelis. Um, if, uh, if there's a need to put uh, certain understandings uh, in writing, uh, we will be prepared to do that. Have you already begun to do that? Well, we, we, there, 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 there's a process uh, that's ongoing, uh, but uh, uh, beyond that, I, I will not comment. I, yeah, I don't understand something. You said if there is a need to do it, but it seems that there is a need if the cabinet won't approve all the measures you're looking them to. For them well, to without uh, something that this this, this is this is not unusual in negotiations that um, if there are understandings that uh, you know need to be you know codified in writing, we're fully prepared to do that. Why can't you take the next step and say that you're doing that if it does appear by all public accounts that you do need to do that? <laughs> Well, and, and, <laughs> that you are <laughs> and I said we're prepared to do that. Well, well uh, I just don't understand why you can't say where you are in the process of doing that. We, we, are, we are still having discussions uh, with the Israelis uh, to encourage uh, uh, them, uh, you know, to return to direct negotiations and to create the conditions uh, for a direct negotiation to resume. If as part of this process we need to write certain things down, we will. And you prefer not to? Do I, I, you know, we... Um, we're, we're happy to. There's, there's no mystery here. Um, you know, there's been there's been public conjecture about a letter for several days. We've not denied that uh, that is something that we're prepared to do. Well, we haven't commented on it either. There's no mystery here. The entire thing is a mystery. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. The offer that was given. I'm not going to go into the deal, Saeed. Well, you know, the feeling around town that it was really too excessive and too generous for a freeze that for 90 days. Is there a feeling in the State Department that may may have been a bit too excessive? Well, your 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 
presuming something um, that uh, uh, I, I can't comment on, uh, but I would just caution you that, as always, uh, you know, reports that, come, that involve certain specifics, some of them may be true, uh, some of them are not true, and I, I can't comment about which is which. Uh, look, th this, is, this is important to the region, it is important to our national security, it's important to the future uh, of Israel uh, and a prospective Palestinian state. Um, how do you put a price tag on that? Uh, we, are, we are interested in doing what needs to be done you know, to, see, to see a two-state solution. Uh, that is something that goes beyond a, a you know, particular price tag on a particular uh, you know, set of actions. Uh, this, is, this is in the uh, you know, interest of the region. It's in the interest of Israel. It's in the interest of the Palestinian people. And we, the United States, are going to do everything that we can uh, to move this to a, a successful agreement. General Powell expressed a bit of dismay that, you know, what, what do settlements have to do with F-35, you know? Should, should he be dismayed at what, what is the connection between the freezing of the settlement and, and uh, 20? Well, I mean, General Powell uh, knows as well as anyone that uh, in, inherent in this, uh, you know, the calculations that these leaders will make uh, is concern about uh, security. Uh, and you know these are these are ultimately uh, you know political decisions that are made, uh, and uh, they have to involve reassuring the, the population in Israel and the population in the Palestinian territory that uh, not only is an agreement in their interest, but they are getting something of value you know from this process. Uh, but ultimately, it will be up to Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Abbas. Uh, to look at, uh, at what is on the table and determine that uh, this is in the best interest of their people. We believe earnestly that what we are putting forward uh, as part of this process is definitely in their immediate and long-term interest, and we hope that uh, uh, they will in turn be able to you know, convince their governments and their people uh, to continue this process. One last uh, issue. The Palestinians claim that every time they attempt to exercise anything akin to independence, or, or would suggest that they are pursuing an, uh, you know, the, the uh, sort of declaration of a state uh, that you guys stop them, you know, and they cite uh, little modest uh, steps in Mexico City and other places, UN agencies all across the map. Could you comment on that? Well, we we, we have been in a direct negotiation. We've made clear, and the leaders themselves have agreed that this direct negotiation is the best path. Uh, to reach an agreement uh, that will yield you know, security, prosperity, and a two-state solution. And, and that continues to be our view, and we think that is a view that is shared uh, by Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Abbas. Uh, PJ, are you ready to give the, the Israelis guarantees that after 90 days you won't ask them to renew the moratorium again and that the freeze doesn't include Jerusalem? Um, uh, Michelle, again, I, I'm, I'm not going to get into, uh, you know, particulars. Uh, if you if you think back to well, if you think if you think back though, uh, you know, for example, the uh, as the secretary has said, uh, the, the moratorium that did run for ten months did not include uh, East Jerusalem. Uh, it was something uh, that uh, uh, initially uh, you know was discounted, but as the process evolved. Uh, became something of great value uh, and, and is something that uh, the Palestinians have indicated publicly they want to see renewed. Uh, we are trying to create the conditions for a resumption of the direct negotiations. Uh, we, have, we continue conversations with both sides, and, and we hope that uh, from these conversations we'll yield the conditions that will allow uh, you know, both sides to uh, indicate a willingness to resume the direct negotiations. That is, in terms of, of you know, what it will take, that is, uh, that, that is something that we're still trying to determine. The Israelis are, are in need for this guarantees to resume negotiations. I'm sorry, what? The Israelis are in need for this guarantees uh, regarding... Well, uh, well again, the, you know, the, the, these, these, these are decisions that the leaders have to make now, and if we are successful in... Uh, in, in, in uh, convincing uh, the governments to, uh, to resume negotiations. These will be judgments that will have to be made during the course of the process. I, I'm not getting into particulars. We want to get them 
back into the negotiations. We're trying to create the conditions uh, to allow that uh, to occur. PJ, the, the original 10-month freeze only became something of great value because you were you ended up being forced to pressure the Palestinians to accept it. Is that not correct? Uh, I, I mean, I, they didn't. Well, it wasn't everything that they wanted. I, I'm, you know, again, um, I, I'm, I can't speak for uh, President Abbas or Prime Minister Netanyahu. We, we are, we want to encourage them to resume the negotiations. Yeah, understood. But and, and uh, they, they will be the ones that determine. Uh, right, let's look back. Whether to do that, and, and as if we are able to resume the negotiations, um, that. Uh, uh, sufficient progress is being made uh, yeah, to enable those negotiations but, to continue. But looking back at, at August, <clears throat> when, the when the direct talks, the only reason the Palestinians came back <clears throat> or agreed to go into the direct negotiations was because you told them to. So this thing that you say that was of great value, that was discounted at first, it was also discounted by you at first. Well, I mean, the, I, the U.S. position at the beginning was that all settlement activity had to stop. They said, okay, we'll stop it for 10 months in the West Bank, but not East Jerusalem. You got on board with that, and because you got on board with it, that became something that you, that you pushed the Palestinians to accept it, and that's why it became something of great value. I'm, I'm, well, no? uh, again, I, 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 you know, the, um, uh, we're just trying to get the, the parties right. back into negotiations, and, then my last and that one on remains our, 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 the, our earnest and intensive uh, Effort. What does it, uh, my last one, what, what does it say about the state of U.S.-Israeli relations that the Israeli government, which is the, your top ally in the region and uh, the beneficiary of billions and billions of dollars in aid over the last 60 years, is demanding written guarantees that, are, that a verbal assurance from the Secretary of State of the United States isn't good enough for them? Uh, again, it, it, it is, uh, Matthew, you've been around the State Department for a long time. It is, uh, it is part of the regular order that as you are going through negotiations uh, yeah, that uh, yeah, certain details of those negotiations are written down uh, that, and, and you know that's, that happens every day in relationships between the United States and and uh, any other country All right. I said that was my last one but I lied because I do it <laughs> and, that, and that is why is it until today no one was willing to say publicly that you were really to uh, that you were going to write this stuff down what has changed in the course since since the weekend what has changed over the course of this week that you're now willing to stand up here and say yes we're willing to put these things in writing whereas before it was Oh, we're not going to comment on the play-by-play, -play, and we're not going to talk about anything of it's substance. It's the pluckiness of the media in this room. What well, has anything <laughs> has anything has anything changed in the in in the process and the discussions that you're now willing to, to, to say this? Whereas, uh, even even yesterday, uh, you're able. Uh, if I spill out all the news every single day, what in the world will you have to write about? So. <laughs> Can you tell us who the conversations are with? <clears throat> the only, I think you described uh, Ambassador Hill as having conversations with his Jordanian counterpart. I mean, who, who are you talking I, I, to? I happen not to know, but I, I'm sure well, it's someone you, within the foreign. Can you find out? I'll, I'll, I'll ask David. You, you have been talking about this plan. This is plan A, but I've come to understand in the last two days there has been a, a drastic uh, changeover uh, being discussed about a plan B. Will you like to spill the beans? Uh, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I would, uh, I would, I would caution you. We, we, you know, we, we have a plan A. We think it's a good plan A. We're, we're focused on plan A. We're not focused on plan B. So there is a plan B. You're not focused on it. Mm -hmm. As he said, I'm just repeating what he said. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, encouraging you to think along those lines. Believe, please. <laughs> oh, Burma. <laughs> please, for for one more sec, please. Um, we have a lengthy story out of the region today that describes a series of recent instances where the U.S. government has opposed. That was already asked. Was it? Yeah. No, it's, what, what are you talking about? I think he asked that question back then. What about the... Uh, you know, about declarations of state, anyway. Go well, ahead. can you address why it is that the administration does not wish to see even small steps toward uh, recognition of uh, the Palestinian authority 
as a participating uh, member in international fora. If I email you the story, will you yeah. just email me back <laughs> and comment? The same answer you did when the question was asked the first time, if you want. Well, um, I, I, we've been asked this question a number of times uh, in, in, the, in the context of uh, the, the peace process. Uh, we have encouraged both sides to avoid you know, steps uh, which are perceived as undermining uh, you know, the negotiation. And uh, uh, so some of the public statements have been made uh, in, in recent days uh, by Palestinian officials about uh, taking issues, you know, to the United Nations, which in essence would preempt, uh, you know, the direct negotiations that we believe are the, uh, the best route uh, to a two-state solution. That remains our view, and that is, is, what is uh, the view that we continue uh, to express to both sides. Um, on Burma, has Secretary Clinton uh, called the Burmese leader Aung San Suu Kyi because a lot of world leaders have been making telephone calls to her? Uh, I, I won't rule out that at a point um, uh, the Secretary uh, uh, you know, will do that. She has sent a personal letter uh, to Aung San Suu Kyi in recent days. Uh, we've had uh, direct discussions uh, you know, with her uh, and uh, uh, our, our charge uh, in Burma. Uh, but as you can tell, you know, the secretary was on an extensive trip, is now traveling again. But I, I would anticipate that at some point she may well reach out uh, to Aung San Suu Kyi. And the, the UN. Uh, hmm? Did the charge deliver the letter? Yeah. Thanks. At the UN Third Committee yesterday, uh, the, there was a resolution passed on Burma human rights violation in which the U.S. supported it. And the key countries in the region, like India, China, Vietnam, voted against the resolution, Thailand, Indonesia abstained on it. So do you think U.S. and your allies are isolated as far as those countries in the region are concerned on this? Well, I mean, this is, this is something that uh, we have and will continue to talk to uh, other countries uh, in the region, uh, particularly countries uh, that have relationships with Burma uh, and with the, uh, the government there. And, and we believe there needs to be a strong, uh, unified, firm message uh, that there needs to be change. Uh, in Burma. The election that just happened uh, is not, uh, you know, part of the change that we think uh, is necessary. We didn't see that as legitimate. Um, we don't think that Aung San Suu Kyi uh, should have been uh, uh, detained in any event. Uh, you know, but uh, now that she has been released, uh, you know, she, she should, you know, maintain, uh, you know, the right to uh, communicate as she sees fit uh, to a meet uh, with her advisors as she sees fit, reconstitute uh, you know, her, uh, her party as she sees fit. Um, we place a special responsibility on the government of Burma you know, to guarantee her safety as she goes about uh, you know, these you know, steps which we think are critical to uh, Burma's future. Uh, ultimately, Burma has to change. It has to have greater political space. It has to have a meaningful dialogue with other ethnic groups. Uh, that's the only way that uh, that Burma is going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, be able to uh, to move away from its current isolation. But th this is a conversation that we have had with China, with India, with other countries, and we will continue that conversation. And finally, just the what's in the letter? I assume it's more than a congratulatory letter. Uh, I, I I can't. Okay. Sure. Egyptian officials have responded basically with contempt to your call for allowing international monitors. Do you have any comment on that? Well, I, I commented on this yesterday. Uh, we, we've made uh, uh, our uh, position clear in terms of the, the steps that have to occur uh, inside Egypt, uh, you know, for us to uh, have confidence uh, in a credible result coming out of the uh, elections uh, at the end of this month. Uh, we've we've called on a, a robust uh, you know, domestic uh, uh, observation uh, of, this, uh, of this election. And in fact, over the years, we, we have contributed uh, you know, to uh, Egyptian civil society to, to build up 
uh, you know, capability uh, for meaningful uh, oversight uh, of, uh, of Egyptian elections. We believe that uh, Egypt will put itself in the strongest position possible uh, by acceding to international norms and ensuring that there is uh, international representation as well. Uh, so uh, we, I, we, we did hear uh, Egypt's response, but we haven't changed our view. Question on Iran. Um, yesterday, the Fifth Fleet issued a statement describing the rescue of the U.S. Navy by the rescue by the U.S. Navy of two Iranian sailors in the Gulf region. I want to get your reaction to that. I also wanted to ask about um, how. I want to be clear. My reaction to 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 well to to the operation itself, and, and specifically, uh, I guess the details I I want you to provide are how uh, communication between the U.S. Navy and they were ultimately picked up by an Iranian Coast Guard ship. Uh, was this done through the Swiss? Uh, I, I, you know, I, I'm familiar with a, um, uh, a statement that was put out by military officials uh, in Manama, in which case uh, they, they were aware of, of two Iranian sailors uh, that were uh, adrift uh, uh, in the Gulf, um, and uh, they were able to rescue them, and then they alerted Iran through uh, I believe uh, uh, Oman was it, you know, and and uh, uh, and then you know arrangements were made for the transfer from the U.S. ship to the Iranian ship. Uh, it is something that we do on the high seas, uh, you know, uh, all the time. Uh, whenever we, uh, re you know, our our, our sailors uh, and and you know sailors of of navies around the world, they they. Uh, uh, they respond to uh, distress calls regardless of, of politics. We were happy to, to do this, and, and I believe that there was a, a gesture of thanks uh, uh, you know, provided by the Iranian uh, you know, government, and, and uh, you know, that's, uh, that, that's what's what we do. Also, uh, yeah. Is there any, any, anything new on the attempt to get them back to the table? Uh, no response at this point. What was the gesture of thanks? I actually think that the, the I'm, I'm, I think I'm aware uh, that the Iranian government simply acknowledged and, and its gratitude for the uh, rescue. Anything new on the hikers? Anything new on the hikers? Have you heard whether they'll be released? Um, I, I'm not aware that we have heard anything directly now. Yesterday you said that you are open uh, to Turkey option for this negotiation, but uh, Gary Samo from White House made a statement and. He said Turkey is not possible because uh, you don't see Turkey as a neutral venue because they vote against the sanctions. In Who said that? Gary Samor from White House. Uh, well, um, I, I'll just repeat what I said. You know, we we have uh, we have advised Iran that uh, the first meeting should happen uh, perhaps in uh, Austria or in Switzerland, uh, but we are in fact. Uh, open to uh, uh, a subsequent meeting being in Turkey. So is there, there is no problem for your view about Turkey that they vote well, against uh, the Well, again, let, let, let me be clear. You know, we, we, are, we are seeking a first meeting. We are then seeking the beginning of a process. Uh, we'll see what Iran comes to the table prepared to do. Uh, but should there be uh, subsequent meetings, we would not rule out that uh, uh, those meetings could happen in a variety of locations, and that would include Turkey. David. The Azerbaijani government released uh, bloggers whose case had been taken up by both the President and Secretary of State. Um, your reaction? Also, they, uh, although they released them, they didn't overturn their convictions. Uh, and if, uh, is that a relevant thing? Sure. Uh, we welcome the early release of uh, Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. <laughs> oh, let me start again. We welcome the early release of Azerbaijani youth leaders and bloggers Adnan Hajazad and Amin Amili. We hope for a speedy release uh, of uh, editor uh, Anula Fatulanev. Uh, Fatou Yalev uh, as well. Uh, we closely monitored the trial and sentencing uh, of the bloggers. Uh, both President Obama and Secretary Clinton publicly called for their release. The United States remains committed to working with the government and people of Azerbaijan to advance you know, democratic reforms, including freedom of expression and association. Are you disappointed that the, the criminal charge wasn't 
uh, expunged uh, we, them. As you can tell, we, we have followed these cases closely. We will continue uh, to follow them closely, uh, and we will continue to work on these issues with the government of Azerbaijan. ISIS released a satellite image yesterday of a construction site in North Korea, which makes it a bigger possibility that the North Koreans are creating a light water reactor. Uh, how will this impact future six-party talks? And given that the U.S. has already sanctioned North Korea pretty strictly, what other specific pressures can the U.S. apply? Well, as we have said uh, all along, uh, we want to see uh, North Korea take affirmative steps towards denuclearization. Uh, it has to demonstrate uh, a willingness to meet its international obligations and, in fact, follow uh, commitments that it has made under the 2005 joint statement. If North Korea takes the kinds of steps that we've outlined, we're prepared to uh, respond accordingly. But what North Korea needs to understand is that it cannot have its cake and eat it too. Uh, it, it, it continues to act in a way that presumes that it can have a nuclear program and it can have normal relations with the rest of the world, including the United States. Uh, this is really an either-or proposition. If it wishes to have normal relations with the United States, it is going to have to give up its nuclear programs. If it's either-or, what moves left does the U.S. have? Well, we, we, you know, this, the, the ball is in North Korea's court, and to the extent that it continues uh, uh, to pursue, uh, you know, nuclear programs, then that is going to have an effect on uh, the prospect of better relations with the United States. If, if it follows uh, its commitments uh, and if it meets its international obligations, then the door opens to a different kind of relationship. DJ, I don't understand. You, they have to give up their, all of their nuclear programs? I mean, the part of the deal was that you were going to you were going to help them with light water reactors. Well, but, you know, and, and if, if they take affirmative steps to denuclearize, uh, we are prepared to have a conversation about how to meet uh, North Korea's uh, legitimate energy needs. Uh, but it has to follow through on the commitments that it made uh, under the 2005 Joint Statement. So they are not allowed, at the, you're, not, you're saying that they are not allowed at the moment to pursue even a civilian nuclear energy? Well, the, the, and, and the fact is, is that, that well, and, and, and the fact is that, that that's the crux of the issue, that it, in its nuclear programs, uh, North Korea is not pursuing uh, a civilian nuclear program uh, you know, by itself. It, it is a uh, a proliferator. Uh, it has a military program. Uh, that military program poses a danger, you know, to the region and to the rest of the world. Uh, North Korea has made a commitment uh, to denuclearize, and we expect North Korea to live up to its commitments. PJ, does the U.S. government have a view now on whether what uh, Ambassador Pritchard uh, and Dr. Hecker have described as the beginnings of a light water reactor at Young, being built at Yongbyon, is indeed a, the beginnings of a light water reactor being built at Yongbyon and not a, an ice skating rink or something else? I mean, do you have a view the, on this well, or not? Well, we, 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 are, we are sorting through the information that, uh, that they have provided us. But you do you not, do you, have you not achieved a judgment yet, or you've achieved a judgment, arrived at a judgment, and you just can't share I'm, 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 There's a limit to what I can share. All right, hold on. PG, Ambassador Pritchard said uh, North Korea wants to build a light water reactor uh, for power generation we, until we, by 2012. And, right. So do you think the... The, their intentions are credible. Well, they, but, but uh, again, the, the the first step in this process is that North Korea has to take affirmative steps to denuclearize, uh, and it's because its nuclear programs up to this point, uh, you know, pose a, a very severe uh, proliferation risk uh, to the region and to the world. Uh, we are prepared to have a discussion with North Korea on how to meet. Uh, its, uh, its energy requirements, but North Korea has to take affirmative steps to denuclearize first.